Hi, welcome to Math Defined, your number one place to learn all about math with me, Mrs. C. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to create and read and understand a box and whisker plot. But first, we're going to go to an ice cream parlor. So here we are at my favorite ice cream parlor, and I am collecting data by doing a survey on the ages of the people that are going into the ice cream parlor. So I collected my data, and I put my numbers in order from least to greatest, which means that the youngest customer going into the ice cream parlor was three, and the oldest was 69. So now I'm going to take this data, and I'm going to organize it into a box and whisker plot. And how I do that is by first finding five important numbers from my data set. And I do that by creating a five number summary table where I look for the minimum value, the maximum value, the median, also called quartile two, another median called quartile one, and a third median called quartile three. All five of these numbers are going to come from my data set above. So let's start by finding the minimum value, which is the smallest value in my data set. And if I look all the way to the left, I see that that number is three. So the youngest person was three. The maximum value, which is the largest value, I look all the way to the right, and I see that that is 69. So the oldest person was 69. Now I'm ready to find the median of this data set. And if you'll recall from my previous videos, to find a median, we use the process of elimination, which means that I eliminate the smallest number and then the largest number, and then I go to the next smallest and to the next largest, and I continue that until I find the middle number of my data. So again, if you need a little reminder about how to find a median, go ahead and click this link up above and that will give you a video on how to find the measures of center, mean, median, mode, and range. So let's continue finding the median and I need to keep eliminating the smallest and then the largest and the smallest and the largest and it kind of gets a little tedious here but this is just something that we need to do in order to find our median. So I'm just kind of going along here, and now I see that I have these two numbers left. And if I eliminate both of those numbers, then there wouldn't be any numbers left to have a number in the middle. So when I use this process of elimination, I use that until I have one number in the middle, or in this case, two numbers in the middle. And when I have two numbers left, what I need to do with that is I need to find the middle of those two numbers by finding the average or the mean. So mathematically, I, to find a mean, I add my two numbers, 23 plus 25, and then I'll divide by 2. So 23 plus 25 gives me 48, and 48 divided by 2 is 24. So my median of this data set is 24, meaning that it's the number that's in the middle of the data set, splitting it in half so I have the same number of values on the left as I do on the right. So in my table for my median for quartile two, I'm going to put the number 24. Now quartile one is also a median, as I said before, but this is a median instead of being of the entire data set, it's a median of the numbers that are to the left of 24. And we call those numbers the lower quartile. And that's why we have this quartile one. So let's go ahead and use process of elimination again to find the median of the numbers that are to the left or in the lower quartile of 24. So I eliminate the smallest and then I eliminate the largest, which is 23. The largest is not 24 because 24 is actually not a number in my data set. Then I go ahead and I eliminate five and then 20 and I just keep doing this until I end up with one or two numbers in the middle. And this time I'm going to have one number in the middle making that really easy to see. So this 12 is the median of the lower quartile and that is quartile one. Now quartile three is also a median but it's the median of the numbers to the right of 24. So that would be called the upper quartile. So let's go ahead and find the median there. So we're gonna use process of elimination by eliminating 25, then 69, 
and then we keep doing that until we end up again with either one number or two numbers in the middle and we're going to end up with 41. So 41 is my quartile 3. It is the median of the upper quartile. So now what I've basically done with these three medians is I have taken my data set and I have divided it up into four equal parts. So each section has the same number of values in it. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and create, or in this case, construct my box and whisker plot. So I start by making a number line, and then I look at my minimum value and my maximum value, and I see that my smallest is 3, my largest is 69. So my number line is going to need to have values from 0 to 70. So I went ahead and did that, and then I'm going up by increments of 5. So now I'm ready to plot the five numbers from the table onto the number line. And I'm going to place them slightly above the number line, which is going to give me room to draw the box and whiskers. So I'm going to go ahead and put my minimum value of 3, maximum value of 69, my median of 24, my quartile 1 of 12, and my quartile 3 of 41. The next thing I want to do is construct my box. And my box is going to encompass the three quartiles. So you see my box here. And remember that each of my quartiles is separating my data into equal sections. So that dot that's in the center, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line through that, separating my box into two equal parts. The next thing I need to do is draw my whiskers. Because remember, this is a box and whisker plot. So my first whisker is going to go from my quartile 1 to my minimum value of 3. And that is going to be called a whisker. Now, of course, in order to stay balanced, we can't just have one whisker. We have to have two whiskers. So my second whis whisker is going to go from quartile 3 to my maximum value of 69. So there's my second whisker. And there you have it you have just constructed a box and whisker plot. And remember, a box and whisker plot takes the data that you've collected and it organizes it into four equal sections. So if I start at my box, this portion here to the left of quartile 2, so basically in between quartiles 1 and 2, there's 25% of my data. Then between quartile 2 and 3, I have another 25% of my data. And then each whisker also represents 25% of my data, because when I add those up together, that would represent the entire survey. And there you have it. So from there, especially if you're in school, they're going to give you a box and whisker plot, and they're going to ask you some questions about the data. So you would end up with a, a graph that looks like this, and you might get a question that says, what percent of the customers were younger than 12? Well, 12 is at quartile 1. If they're younger, that means that I need to go to the left, and I can see that that's a whisker, and that whisker represents 25% of my data. So I would say that 25% of the customers that went into the ice cream shop were younger than 12. I can also answer this question about what fraction represents customers older than 41. Well, 41 was the median for quartile 3, and so if you're older, that means you're going to have to go to the right up to 69, and I know that that also represents 25% of my data, so I just need to think of a fraction that's equivalent to 25%, and that would just be 1 fourth. So we can say that not only does each section represent 25% of the data, but it also represents 1 fourth of the data. Another question might be is, what percent of the customers were between 12 and 41 years old? Well, when I look at my box and whisker plot, I can see that 12 was quartile 1, 41 was quartile 3, and that was in my box, and my box represents 50% of my data, because if I add 25 plus 25, that will give me 50%. So that means that 50% of the people that were going into the ice cream parlor were between the ages of 12 and 41 years old. And you might be thinking, well, who really cares? Why would an ice cream company even care about knowing that? And one thing that you would learn from that if you were the owner of this shop is you would know that if you have ages from 12 to 41, 
then that probably means that you have families coming in. So you have adults coming in with their kids. So you have families coming. So you want to make sure that you have ice cream flavors and toppings and things like that that their, the adults would like and so would their kids. So that's one reason that you would take a survey like this and then try to read and understand the survey presented in a box and whisker plot. Then I have this question. It says, are the ages more spread out below the first quartile or above the third quartile? And basically what that is doing is you're just comparing your whiskers. Because my first whisker goes from quartile one to my minimum value of three. So I can see that one. Now let's compare that one to the other side, quartile three at 41 up to 69. And I can see that that whisker above quartile three is longer. So that means that the age spread is more spread out because it has the longer whisker. So I would say that the data is more spread out above the third quartile. Now one more thing that people look at is something called the IQR or the interquartile range. It sounds very complicated, but it's really not. Let me show you. So here's my box and whisker plot again. And let's just take a look at that, that phrase, interquartile range. So inter means like inside. The quartiles, well, we have three quartiles, quartile one, two, and three. And a range is looking at the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. So we're going to take a look at the box and we're going to subtract the value at Q3, quartile 3, from the value at quartile 1. So we're going to do 41 minus 12, which is 29. And you might think, well, what in the world does that mean? Well, basically what it means is, is that in that middle half of my data, that middle 50% of my data, the age, ages of my customers going into the ice cream parlor did not vary more than 29 years. So the biggest difference between them was 29 years and it was, you know, most of them were less than 29 years. That's what that means. All right, I have one more bonus question for you. Not only do people look at the spread of the data, the interquartile range, but people like to look to see how is the data distributed. And they use three terms when they talk about distributing data. They talk about, is it symmetrical? Is it skewed left? Or is it skewed right? Do you know what the answer is? If you do, leave your answer in the comment section below. And in the meantime, I really hope this video helped you out. Please do check out more of my videos, and if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when my next videos come out. And even more important, if you like this video, do click that like button. I would really appreciate it. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. I've got to go get some ice cream.